Now coming to this inversion integral method, which is one of the techniques of inverse Z transforms, we will consider any transfer function x or any, any polynomial in x of z and a polynomial z power k minus 1. If you multiply x of z, the given polynomial in with z power, z power k minus 1, if you multiply it with dz and a center, for example, a z plane, a z axis, a z plane, the real part of z and imaginary part of z, as you can see, we will have a circle C and all the poles and zeros, poles and zeros of x of z into z power k minus 1, if they are lying inside this circle C, if they are lying this inside the circle C, that is 1 by 2 pi j cyclic integral or circle x of z z power k minus 1 this is nothing but x of k that is the your if you are integrating all the transfer from the all the polynomial x of z into z power k minus 1 dz now this x of k can be obtained by the form of residues k1 plus k2 plus so on plus km where m are the number of poles and zeros number of poles of the polynomial x of z into z power k minus 1 right so you are getting these residues can be obtained from the theory of complex variables theory of complex variables the proof of which is not in the scope of this subject we can only find uh, consider this equation x of k is equal to k1 plus k2 plus km where all k1 k2 km are all constants and this k1 k2 km can be obtained by the theory of complex variables where m the number of residues indicates the number of residues and m are the number of poles simple poles of x of z into z power k minus 1 where the poles and zeros of x of z into z power k minus 1 must lie inside the circle and within which that integral this around that circle you are trying to integrate this function so x of k is this one so the same x of k you can consider it as k1 plus k2 plus k so ki can be written as residue of residue of x of z z power k minus 1 at simple pole at simple pole z is equal to z i k i where i is from 1 to so on m so m are the number of poles that are existing in x of z into z power k minus 1. So k i is the residue of x of z, z power k minus 1 at simple poles z is equal to z i. If you are having all simple poles, if you are having double pole with degree q a double, or multiple pole having multiple poles with degree q then we will have k i is equal to 1 by q minus 1 factorial limit as z tends to z i d q minus 1 by d z q minus 1 into x of z z power k minus 1 this is the formula for ki when you are having multiple poles this these things the proof of which is not necessary and it is beyond the scope of this uh, subject therefore we will go and try and understand a particular problem to find out what is the inverse z transform by using inversion integral method now let us see what is the 
an example x of z which is equal to z into 1 minus e power minus a t by z minus 1 into z minus e power minus a t. For example, let us say this is our example and we have already used this example in the partial fraction expansion method and by partial fraction expansion method the output or the uh, solution that we have got for x of k is 1 minus e power minus a k t. So any of the four different methods that we are using for inverse z transform we will have to get the same result therefore x of k is equal to 1 minus e power minus a k t must be obtained when you are using this inversion integral method. So for this we note that x of z into z power k minus 1 which is nothing but if you multiply x of z with z power k minus 1 you have e power minus a t which is this x of, x of z e power minus a t into z power k minus 1. If you multiply this you will have z power k into 1 minus e power minus a t by z minus 1 z minus e power minus a t. This is x of z into z power k minus 1. Now we have this x of z into z power k minus 1. This factor has pole set. You can say rather simple pole set. Simple pole set z is equal to z1 you have one pole and z is equal to z2 you have e power minus a t that is you have two poles that is x of z z power k minus 1 has two simple poles at z is equal to z1 is equal to 1 and z2 is equal to e power minus a t so you have two simple poles. Because of the two simple poles, the output or the uh, solution of which we get the sample data signal, you will have two residues k1 plus, you will have two residues k1 plus k2. With this k1 plus k2, we will have to find out what is k1 and what is k2. So k1 is nothing but residue of x of z z power k minus 1 at simple pole z is equal to 1 at simple pole z is equal to 1. Now we will try to find out what is the value of we will try to find out what is the value of k1. K1 is equal to Z minus 1 Z minus 1 into Z power K 1 minus E power minus A T by Z minus 1 Z minus E power minus A T. Now when you cancel this and replace z is equal to 1 here you will have 1 into 1 minus e power minus a t by 1 minus e power minus a t when you are replacing this with 1 this with 1 you have this and these two are getting cancelled you get so with this you have k1 is equal to 1 similarly we have k2 K2 is residue of x of z, z power k minus 1 at simple pole z is equal to e power minus a t. Therefore, K2 is equal to z minus e power minus a t into z power k 1 minus e power minus a t by z minus 1 z minus e power minus a t now when you cancel these two and say that z is equal to e power minus a t then you have e power minus a k t 1 minus e power minus 
ए टी बाय ई पावर माइनस ए टी माइनस वन आई रिप्लेस द जी विल ई पावर माइनस ए टी नाउ दिस इज माइनस ऑफ दिस वन सो यू विल हैव ए नेगेटिव साइन सो यू विल हैव ई पावर माइनस ए के टी नाउ व्हाट इज के टू फॉर अस के टू इज इक्वल टू ई पावर माइनस ए के टी नाउ व्हाट इज एक्स ऑफ के x of k is equal to k1 plus k2 now k1 which we have obtained is 1 and k2 we have obtained it as minus e power minus a k t so 1 minus e power minus a k t so when we refresh and review what we what is the result that we have got for partial fraction expansion method is the same with the inverse integral method so for the same transfer function or the, for the same uh, function that is given to us which we have worked with both the partial fraction expansion method as well as inversion integral method similarly we will be trying to see for multiple pole for example we will go with another example we will go with another example x of z is equal to z square by z minus 1 whole square z minus e power minus 80 now obtain the inverse z transform of x of z using inversion integral method if this is a question that is asked for us now let us see that x of z into z power k minus 1 we will note that x of z z power k minus 1 will be into z square by x of z is z square by z minus 1 whole square z minus z e power minus 80 into z power k minus 1 now z square z power k minus 1 i will be getting z power k plus 1 by z minus 1 whole square z minus z power minus 80 right so what is x of z into z power k minus 1 that we have got x of z into z power k minus 1 is equal to z power k plus 1 by z minus 1 whole square z minus e power minus 80 now x of z z power k minus 1 has a simple pole at z is equal to e power minus 80 simple pole z is equal to z1 z1 is equal to e power minus 80 and the same x of z z power k minus 1 has a double pole double pole at z is equal to 1 z is equal to z2 which is equal to 1 therefore it has got now what is the result that we are going to get x of k you are having two different poles one is a simple pole and the other is a double pole now you will again have k1 plus k2 for this example so now we are trying to find out what is k1 and what is k2 now this from this is the formula where this is the function which we are going to use in our further problem so solution therefore i will put it i need to find out k1 which is the residue of x of z z power k minus 1 at simple pole z is equal to e power minus 80 now this is z minus e power minus 80 into z power k plus 1 by 
z minus 1 whole square z minus e power minus a t. Now when you cancel this and at z is equal to e power minus a t, if I replace it with this, I have e power minus a k plus 1 t by e power minus a t minus 1, I can always write it as 1 minus e power minus a t whole square. The negation square gives you the same result therefore for convenience I have written 1 minus e power minus a t whole square. <coughs> So what is the result that we have got for K1? This is nothing but K1. Let us keep it aside. K1. Now what is K2 for us? K2 is the residue of X of Z, Z power K minus 1 at double pole Z is equal to, Z2 is equal to 1. It is a double pole at Z, therefore K2 can be obtained as, it is of order 2, therefore 1 by 2 minus 1 factorial limit as Z tends to 1. This is the value of the pole and D power Q minus 1, 2 minus 1 is 1 by DZ power 1. So D by DZ, D by DZ, Z minus 1 whole square into z power k plus 1 by z minus 1 whole square into z minus e power minus a t. So when I cancel these two, I am having k2 as 1 by 1 factorial limit z tends to 1 d by dz of z power k plus 1 by z minus e power minus a t z minus e power now you have a differentiation with respect to z differentiation u by v rule therefore we are going to get this part of the trans uh, the solution that you have z minus e power minus a t whole square and z minus e power minus a t u v rule that is V du, that is k plus 1 z power k minus u minus u dv, dv is 1 with respect to z. Now you are going to substitute z is equal to 1 here. In this can, this is equal to 1 by 1 factorial limit z tends to 1. Now when you are substituting 1 in, in place of z, you have 1 minus e power minus a t into k plus 1 into 1 minus 1 by you are replacing 1, 1 power k plus 1 is 1 by 1 minus e power minus a t whole square. So you are having this and I will try to simplify I try to simplify to obtain k2, k2 I will get it here, 1 minus e power minus a t into k, k plus 1 into plus 1 minus e power minus a t minus 1 by 1 minus e power minus a t whole square. So, if I separate these terms, I will have 1 minus e power minus a t into k by 1 minus e power minus a t whole square plus 1 minus e power minus a t minus 1. 1 and 1 gets cancelled. So, I will have minus e power minus a t by 1 minus e power minus a t whole square. And you can also cancel 1 minus e power minus a t and the square here. So I will have k by 1 minus e power minus a t minus e power minus a t by 1 minus e power minus a t whole square. Now this is k2. So 
So x of k for this, which is the solution for inverse z transform of x of z that is given to us, that is k1 plus k2, which are the residues that we have obtained so far. K1 is here, which is nothing but p e power minus a k plus 1t by 1 minus e power minus a t whole square plus k2 plus k2 is the fact uh, sum of algebraic sum of these two terms which is k by 1 minus e power minus a t minus e power minus a t by 1 minus e power minus a t whole square so you can even further reduce this or simplify this equation into a single term and you can present the result. So this is inversion integral method.